Okay, here we go. I'm going to hand out these handouts. I think some of people, some of you already do have some of these handouts. Okay, here, Ariel, can I give you give you the honors? To hand those out. Okay, so in Jewish meditation, Baruch Hashem. Okay, we're starting this uh, again. This is the second class. Okay, I hope everybody is going to take it easy and get comfortable and be comfortable. Okay, and thank you. Extras always good. So uh, last week we always gonna we're always going to start off with relaxation and we're always going to start off with breathing. Okay, some people forget to breathe. We try to move in our consciousness to our breathing. Okay, it's because that is the first, one way that we are able to go ahead and get to the soul. As we say, the word for soul is neshama and a neshima, which means also breath. The way to get to our neshama, and that is about touching our neshama and touching the higher aspects of our neshama is through breathing. So the way that we go through breathing is we have our legs basically down, and also we're, we're gonna try to just focus on our thoughts. Some, Like I say, some people, if you come to the next classes and later classes, to have a pad and a paper, like you do, because some things come to mind, and you might wanna jot them down, okay? Because it could be many things come into the, your mind, uh, could be dynamic things, unbelievable insights, could be just something that you don't understand, let's say, that could come, or it could be that you have to remember to pick up the dry cleaning, okay? So then you don't want to forget that, so once you write it down, it's downloaded, and therefore you can move on, and you're free now to refocus your thoughts. The thoughts might wander, it's okay if they do, just try to bring it back and bring it back into focus, okay? So first we'll start off with the, use, the uh, position, usually a feet on the floor, not crossing the legs, and then breathing from the diaphragm down here below, okay? And in through the nose, out through the mouth, so we go, and make sure the stomach expands, the diaphragm expands, and not the chest, okay? And then you just try about five of these. And it's okay if you hear outside noises. It's okay if your mind wanders. Just try to bring back your mind and your focus to being aware of the breathing. I want you to try now to bring your attention, your awareness to your, the, your feet. I want you to try to feel the feelings of their feet. You can even wiggle your toes to bring your attention there. Try to be aware of the bones, the muscles, any kind of tension, the feeling of it pressing against the floor, whatever it is that you're feeling, the hugging of the shoes, right? Hopefully not an itch. Okay, so just feel the feeling there and just allow yourself just to be only aware only aware of the feelings in your feet. The only thing that's going through your, your awareness is the feeling in your feet. And if there's any tension in your feet for any reason, you can make it that the feet are an extension of your lungs. That means when you breathe in, your lungs and your air goes extends all the way down to your feet. And as you breathe out, you breathe out any tension, leaving the feet feeling very heavy and very relaxed. And no tension remains in the feet. And then you move your awareness now up to your ankles and try to feel the bones of your ankles. The only thing that's passing through your awareness is the feeling in your ankles. And now move your attention now up to your calves, your shins, feel the bones, feel the muscles, feel if there's any tension there. If there's any tension, just allow it to relax. And if you can't fully relax it, it's fine, okay. It's okay to move on. Move now your attention to your knees. Breathe into your knees as if they are an extension of your lungs. And breathe it out and relax it. Allowing your knees just to be totally relaxed, feeling heavy. 
And now bring your awareness to your thighs. Feel yourself pressing on the chair, the weight of your body. Feel any muscles there. And if your hands are on your thighs, you can feel the hands on the thighs. And just let your awareness just be in the feelings in the thighs. Meanwhile, keep your breathing deep. <sighs> breathing out all tension. Now moving your awareness to your hips, allowing your awareness to only be attentive to the hips, only being focused on the hips, only being aware of the hips. And the buttocks feel if there's any tension there. And as you breathe out, you feel all of the tension leaving, feeling so relaxed. And now you're moving your attention to your back, the small of your back, the lower part of your back. Just feel the muscles, the bones, the blood flow. And relax it. Letting your awareness now go to the middle part of your back. And relax that too. Now the upper part of your back. And relax it, allowing your whole back to be completely and totally relaxed. All the muscles are completely relaxed and feeling heavy. If you can't fully relax it, it's okay. Now let your awareness go to your stomach and the muscles around your stomach. Feel if there's any tension there. And relax it, allowing all the muscles around your stomach to completely relax. And now let your awareness move to your chest. Feel if there's any tension there. And as you breathe in and you breathe out, all of the tension leaves, leaving your whole torso completely relaxed. And now focus on your hands. Feel your hands. You can even wiggle your fingers. Feel if there's any tension there and feel you're relaxed. The fingers, the palms, all the aspects of the bones, all of it completely relaxed and feeling heavy. And now your wrists. Let your awareness go to your wrists. And now your forearms, your elbows, and your upper arms. Feel if there's any tension there and allow your whole arms to feel completely relaxed. And now let your awareness go to your shoulders. Feel if there's any tension in your shoulders. Just let your awareness focus on your shoulders only and relax it. And now the back of your neck. Feel if there's any tension in the back of your neck and relax it. And now go to the skull of your head. Feel if there's any tension there. And then now moving to your forehead. Relax the forehead, feeling the forehead and all the muscles there just completely relaxed and feeling heavy. And the muscles around your eyes also. Oh, they just feel so amazing when they just release all of the tension. Just breathe it out, leaving all of the muscles around your eyes. Just feeling completely relaxed and heavy. And your cheekbones jaw bones, jaw the muscles, all the muscles in your face, feeling so relaxed. And now the front of your neck, feel if there's any tension there. And now go over your body. If there's any other places, any places that you might have missed, or any places that might have gotten a little bit more tense again, 
Just try to breathe into it and breathe out, letting the whole body and every single part of the body being completely and totally relaxed. And now take three deep breaths. Now just try to be aware of the breathing as you feel the air coming in through the nostrils, filling your stomach, and as you breathe out, you feel the heat of the air that goes out of your mouth, out of your mouth. Just try to remain focused on the breathing. And now in the sheet in front of you, now we're going to focus on the name of God called the Tetragrammaton. That's the four-letter name of God, as we call it, Havaya, the name of Havaya, spelled with the four letters Yud, K, Vav, and K. So we're, we're going to pronounce these letters in our minds. We're not going to pronounce them with our mouths. And how we pronounce them, and you can look at it, you could look at the letters on the page in front of you, okay? And you could focus in one letter at a time, that each time you breathe in, you're breathing in the first letter, Yud. So now you're going to practice now, breathe in the first letter, Yud, and let the Yud, the sound of the Yud, echo into every fiber of your being, from your head all the way down to your toes, that you feel the letter Yud all over your body, as you say in your mind, Yud. And now you breathe out, and now you breathe in the letter Hey. And allowing the letter Hey to permeate all of your being, as you hear Hey in your mind, and you feel Hey in your whole body. And you breathe out. And now you breathe in the letter Vav. And you feel the Vav vibrating in your entire being. And you breathe out. And you breathe in the last letter Hey. Allowing the Hey to permeate every fiber of your being. Now I want you now, as you're doing these breathing, and you can do it any way you want, you can breathe in all of Yud K Vav K in one breath. You can breathe in Yud, breathe out He, breathe in Vav, and breathe in He, and breathe out He. But I want you to try to picture in your mind's eye, if you close your eyes, these letters in front of you. Try to picture as best and as clearly as you possibly can, these letters. And as you breathe them in, you feel these letters going in through your nostrils and filling you up. I want you to notice and just be aware as you're doing this exercise as you're doing this meditation, that you're trying to notice any letters which are not clear. You're trying to notice any colors, thoughts, sounds, memories, images of any kind that might pop up. You just keep breathing in the letters and breathing out. Don't judge whatever comes to your mind. Just breathe in, breathe out, trying to hold clear, as clear as you possibly can, these four letters in your mind's eye. OK, 
Okay, take three more breaths and then you can open your eyes. Okay, last week we did the same exercise of the Yudke Vavke, which is the four-letter name of God. It's called the Shaviti, actually, meaning I, I placed Hashem before me always. Okay? Now, um, here it is. So, The interesting thing is, some people had different uh, experiences that they were sharing, okay? Such as if a letter doesn't come out clear, some letters are clear, some letters are not. Uh, colors also, okay? So this is really from uh, an, the, uh, as early as the Abu Lafia meditations and as what Rabbi Bard Sadok brings down, okay? As we know, each one of these letters really corresponds to one of the worlds. That was, we know that we have in our tradition four dimensions. We have Atzilut, which is the higher, right? And then we'll have Bria, which is creation. Then we'll have Yitzira, formation. And then we'll have, finally, the fourth world, the world of Asiya. Okay? So the idea really here is, if you've done this exercise and you've came up with a letter, okay? If you haven't done this exercise, so turn it off now at home, okay? So, so put it on mute or ear muff it, okay? So I'm just going to read from you something that would come up maybe in a, in a meditation, maybe if you would happen to meditate on this again. So it says here, when one meditates on the name, if he has sinned and thus blemished any one of the four letters, then that letter he will not be able to meditate on clearly. In other words, it won't come out clearly. He can thus know the source of his weakness, okay? So when meditating upon the name, if the letters appear as if written in black ink, so one can actually know the place where his soul emanates from, okay? It's never in stone, though, okay? Because a person can always jump, as we'll get to in the Gates of Reincarnation class, okay? That a person can always jump into another, uh, another route, okay? But in any case, for right here, in our, you know, purposes here, let's say if the uh, letters that he meditated on, that one meditated on, were black, like we see in the Sefer Torah, okay? So a person can know that one soul emanates from the lowest, which is called Asiya, the lowest realm, okay? If the letter appears red, then one can, who sees such emanates from his soul would em be emanating from the, another world, the world of the angels, the world of Yetzirah. If the letters appear white, that soul emanated from Bria, that's the world of the souls. If the letters appear not only white, but also glowing and sparkling, which all y'all did today, okay? This soul emanates from Atzilut, okay? By this can a man know to which level his soul clings. In this way, also a man should meditate on the name Havaya, which is this name here, as if placed in every organ or member of his body, be it his face, his hand. If there be something lacking of the letters on the specific area, then the man can identify where he needs to work on himself. It's in other words, if it's a certain organ or some, something like that, okay? In other words, let's say you'll imagine the Yudke Vavke, you know, in your kishkas, okay? So, you you know, you're picturing Yud Kevavke flowing through your kishkas, but then there's something that doesn't come out clearly. So then there's some flaw there, as opposed to, let's say, your right arm or left arm. We'll get to this in later meditations, okay? The true and highest way of, per of perceiving Havaya, and this is what we always have to practice from now on, okay? 
in meditations is to see the name as a burning fire. Okay? Here I'm even going to take it to another step. Okay? If one perceives the name as such, then that one is without blemish and is complete. So here's a way to cut to the chase. So I'm going to bring you something from the Kamarna Rebbe. Okay? A fantastic perush that he brings, actually. The Kamarna Rebbe um, was a student of the Baal Shem Tov. Wrote extensively about you know, the, the writings of the Baal Shem, and very specifically it was told, you know, the Baal Shem Tov's meditation, his form of meditative prayer, actually, was comes from the verse, Sohar Ta'ase Lateva. I always will quote this. Sohar Ta'ase Lateva, when Noah was commanded to build an ark, that the ark had to have three stories in it. Three stories is the bottom, middle, and top, okay? So it said three stories, right? You have to make it upper, middle, and lower, right? And of course, the lower was the garbage, or in the middle was the uh, animals, and the top was the people. But the Basham Tov takes it at a completely different level with the next verse that it says that Sohar Tase Leteva can be interpreted completely different. Sohar, which means make a line, make a window for the ark. You gotta see outside, you gotta know what's happening, okay? hard to be in a floating box. Maybe you need some air. Gotta have an air conditioner. Some people say it was a shining stone. It was a stone that gave uh, light inside the ark because it was pretty dark. However, the Baal Shem Tov's interpretation was a shining, Sohar means shining. A shining you will make, not for the Teva meaning ark, but Teva is, is the same Hebrew word as word in Hebrew. Okay? Sohar Shine, ta'ase, you will make, hateva, the word. Meaning you have to make the word to shine. And the Baal Shem Tov extends it to an area which is too overwhelming for when I expose most people to this. Really, he says, every single time you are reading Torah, and every single time, and every single letter you're uttering prayer, you have to get that letter to shine. That letter joins with the next letter, that joins with the next letter, that joins with the next letter, and then... It finally becomes a word, an unbelievable shining word that reaches to the highest heavens and makes this unbelievable connection. You had a question, Jane? The mother's bands. Oh, that's so really good. Do they talk to you? It's good if they do. Well, they just dance. Okay. Dance, is that a good thing or not? Mm -hmm. Listen, it's also a subjective. It's your interpretation. Yeah, it's Was it a happy dance? Yes. Is it a jittery dance? No. Was it... Okay, good. Exactly. So, you know, you guys want to keep that in your mind because this is a developing thing. So, in, and when he says, Tosar, to, Sohar Tase Leteva, so he, to, to give, be more descriptive, and it helps us in our meditation, and especially from what I just told you now. So he says that he got, you know, Tov Shetam Shich Or Ein Sof Letochatevot. It is good to draw the light of the infinite within the word, okay? To help us. And you can do this eyes open. Don't, you know, this, I, you know, I was trying to do this eyes closed and it's just hard for me sometimes to even picture letters. And sometimes I was better at picturing them when they were a distant as opposed to up close, okay? But you can get a habit of this and it certainly is definitely worthwhile to develop this habit big time, okay? Don't forget, the Baal Shem Tov did this out of body experience on Rosh Hashanah, went up to the hall of the Mashiach, saw the Messiah and the Mashiach and says, when is the Master coming? When are you coming? And he told him, when your teaching is spread about and everybody is practicing the Yehudim, these meditations that you are doing. Okay, the Baal Shem Tov was kind of freaked and says, like, when is people, when is everybody going to be able to do that? It was revealed to him certain segulot, certain uh, actions that people can do. And he said, it's possible. He wasn't allowed to reveal those, of course. They didn't let him because that would be too easy, all right? But in the letter, he did write specifically this technique. That means you, when you see a letter and you're gonna pronounce or you're gonna meditate on the Yud Kei Vav Kei, so you wanna, you wanna think of it and you can even look at it. You can even look at it right here and you can go and you can picture it even though it's dark here, picture that the, the, the light of the infinite is shining through like a keyhole. I always use the keyhole analogy, okay? 
So if, you, if you're looking and there's a door and there's a keyhole, imagine the Ein Sof is on the other side of that door. And, but you can see the keyhole. And the keyhole has a light shining through it. The keyhole is in the shapes. There's different doors. There's different keyholes. So therefore, this keyhole is a Yud. This keyhole is a hay. This keyhole is a Vav. And this keyhole is a hay. Now, if you could try to get it to shine, and you could even do it with your just with your simple mental exercise, and turn the volume up, and turn it up, and turn it up, and turn it up so much right now, right now, that it's so great that it totally, totally, you melt into that light. Okay? That's the goal. Okay? You, you follow? That's the meditation. Okay? So now we're going to take it to the next step. Okay? The next step is the you see in the picture before you, you'll notice in the hay there's another name. That's the name of Aleph Dalit. How we pronounce it is called Adonoi. Okay? Or what I will say, Adonut, the name of Adonut. Okay? And this is in every Sephardic Siddur. Actually, it, this is not the complete version in the Sephardic Siddur, as I'm going to share with you. Don't turn the page yet. Don't turn the page yet. Okay? Is, is the meditation, every single time this is mentioned in the Sephardic Siddur, a real Sephardic Siddur. Okay? Not a cracker box Sephardic Siddur. Okay? You'll see this name of God, and you'll see this Olive Dalid Nun Yud inside the last letter, He. Okay? And then what happens is, what the goal is, is then to weave. We're going to weave the two names together. Okay? This is called the cosmic weaving. This is what we call the unification. So if you turn the page, flip the page. So the visualization, this comes also from this Sefer, which is an awesome Sefer, okay, called uh, Walking in the Fire by Rabbi Ariel Bard Sadok. Okay? This one you could probably, I think you can order it on Amazon.com. Fantastic book, okay? This doesn't cost $1,500 like the other one, okay? This might be something more affordable, okay? Okay, and he's got all kinds of um, meditations in there, but take it easy because, and he tells you to take it easy, okay? But he, Rabbi Ariel Bard Sadok, koshertor.com, you can go to him. He's been around, he was around before anybody else with, the, with, the, with Torah on the web. Before anybody. What? Kosher what? Kosher Torah. Dot com. Bard Sadok. Sorry. Bar is like going to a bar. Sadok is T Z A D O K. Sadok. Okay. okay. So the visualization in his order to unify each of the four aspects of the Shekhinah, which is Aleph, Dalit, Nun, Yud, with each of the aspects of the Holy One, Blessed Be He, Yud, Kei, Vav, Kei. In other words, one of the basic meditations that we do when we unite and we say, the Shem Yihud Kud Shav Rihu U for the sake of uniting the Holy One, Blessed Be He, and His Shekhinah, in a form of basic meditation of the letters, it looks like this. In other words, mathematically, mystically, it's translated as these letters. If you put it into letters. Okay? Aleph Dalid is the Shekhinah. Okay? And the Yud Kevavke is the light that dresses in the Shekhinah. The Zohar uses the metaphor, or whether you like it or not, the imagery of a sword. That this sword can, can defeat any armory or any enemy. It is, the light is so bright. So you want to put it in the sheath so that it doesn't decimate all of humanity. <laughs> Sorry to be so... Okay? In other words, we need the, the light of the, the infinite light to be dressed in something. Okay? It needs a cover. Okay? So the idea really is united in the Holy One, blessed be He, with His Shekhinah. So Atsilut with Atsilut, because we know that the Yud of Yud Kevav Ke corresponds to Atsilut, the highest of realms. The Aleph also corresponds to the highest of realms. Berea, the second a letter of the name of Yud Kei Vav Kei, is He. That corresponds with the second letter of the Dalit of the name of Adenut. Okay? 
and so on, each one. So here you have all Shavisis. The Shavisis are these mandalas that people use in Sephardic shuls. You'll see them a lot. They're meditative devices. Um, um, maybe I could find one for you. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is one. Okay. Ooh. Ah. Okay. So these are like meditative devices that you could use and look and focus. And there's names of God written all over. And there's a menorah here. That's a whole. Each one is a meditative meditation on its own. It's Segula prayer, right? But it's usually it's by the Amud, where the prayer master is going to lead. It's right there. Shivisi Hashem Lenegdi Tamid is the big one here. Okay, that's the big phrase here. And then there's a whole bunch of other stuff all in between that you can get lost in. Okay? Right? Hey, letters are very significant. Okay? Letters are everything. Okay? Everything is made up of letters. Everything is made up of letters, okay? When we connect with the letters, okay, that's that's the, the red pill, okay? Just think of red pill, okay? So here we have here the Shavisis. Uh, in all Shavisis, the weaved form of Adanut Havaya takes on two different forms, respectively placed to the right and left of the name of Yud Vavke. So here we have the first one. The weaving is starts off with the name of Yud Ke Vav Ke is going to be first. So we'll see here, as you see, Yud. And then you'll take the first letter of the other name of Adonut with Aleph. And then the next letter is He. And then the next letter is Dalid. The next one is Vav, because that's the third letter of Yud Ke Vav Ke. And the next one is Nun of the Adonut. And then the last letter of Yud Ke Vav Ke is that He. And then that final letter Yud is the name of Adonut. So if you look at every other letter, you'll see Adonut. And you look at the first of those skipping a letter, you'll see Yud Ke Vav Ke. This is, by the way, why you find in all of the sitters where they abbreviate Hashem's name two Yuds. Nobody knows this until now. Well, people know this. You feel out to fill in the blank with your mind, buddy boy. That's right. You have to stop, drop, and roll. Okay? You have to stop, not mumble, 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 much money, much money, much money, much money. Like people you might see in, in the synagogue, God forbid. Okay? Okay? Right? Okay? We are trying to direct humanity or the Judaism on a slightly different path. Okay? We're going back to the Avos, the ancestors. What did they do? They meditated, okay? Avram Avinu meditated. Yitzchak meditated. They all meditated, okay? We're going to try to bring this back. So the dyna dynamics here is now, this is, comes the next uh, exercise, okay? So here, just this another, these other few lines here before we go into the practice. Yud Ke Vav Ke is placed before Adonut in the order of weaving, like I just showed you how it's weaved, one letter combined with the other letter. The first letter here with the first letter there, and so on. This represents the influx of yud ke vav -ke descending into Adonut. This is the supernal blessing from above to below. Okay? So in other words, we're bringing the light down. Okay? As opposed to the next one, the next weaving, I'll just skip, you know, skip here. Adonut is placed before Yud Ke Vav Ke to re represent the desire of Adonut, the Shekhinah, us, we're children of the Shekhinah, to ascend to above. Okay? There's two kinds of light. There's Or Yashar, direct light, and then there's Or Choser, the returning light. Okay? The returning light, which means our desire, our will to connect. God is coming down and we feel it. Can you feel it? And then us is a desire so here is a meditation that you can take in shul from now on. Great practice, okay? Or yashar is the direct light, straight light, and then or choser is the returning light. Pronounced tavaya adanut is the meditation when reciting amen to a blessing. And anytime anybody says a blessing, and you say amen, you have to have this in mind. Okay, it can be done. 
Okay, it can be done. Okay. Now the other thing, this the, a blessing invokes yud ke vav ke's being to permeate that which we bless. In other words, you're bringing it down. Okay, blessings bring it down. Okay, believe it or not, the power of our minds, our openness, allows us and enables us, opportunes us to bring it down. Okay, a blessing means bring it down. Okay, when we say baruch, one of the special intentions, kavana of baruch is more of now. Okay, baruch, that's what a baruch is. Okay, much more than what they teach in some schools. Okay. But here's the most interesting thing here. Adonu Tavaya, which is the backwards form, the Aleph starts first, and then you weave the Yudke Vavke into that, is the meditation when reciting Amen to the Kaddish prayer, which is Kabbalistically, which Kabbalistically is known to be the path of ascending desire. Okay? In other words, when you're answering a Kaddish, if you're in Shul, and you're answering a Kaddish, so you have this form of the Aleph Yud, Dalid, right? Hey, and then the rest of the letters, okay? So you have to have that in mind. You need a sitter for it. And if you have the right sitter, it's there already for you, right? User-friendly, okay? So you know which letters to have in mind when you're doing that, okay? Well, we're just going to do this right now, the, yud, the one with the Yud first, okay? So you can keep this open. You can keep the first name that you have right here in front of you on this sheet, okay? And we're just going to do the breathing exercises. And now from what I brought from the Kamarna Rebbe, what we're going to try to do, what we're going to attempt to do is Tamshik or Ein Sof L'Tocha Tevot. That the letters, that the Diborim, that the speech, that Otiot, and the letters and the words should shine with the light of the infinite, with infinite light. Behergesh Gadol, he says, with a great feeling. And Bamash Tichlul Atzmecha, that what? That you are going to include yourself with them. In other words, it becomes so bright, you become included in that energy, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to breathe. We're going to go back to some breathing. Okay. And you're going to now just picture the Yud. And you're going to use your breathing and you're going to breathe in the Yud. And then you're just going to breathe out. And then you breathe in the olive. And then you breathe out and you can feel the olive permeating your whole being. The sound of the olive. You say the word olive and then breathe out and then you breathe in the hay. And then you breathe out. Now you breathe in the dalit. Feeling the dalit permeate your whole being. Breathe out. You breathe in the Vav, and you breathe out, breathing in now the Nun, breathe out, breathing in the hay. breathe out, and breathing now in the Yud, and breathing out. And now if you could try to picture the name of Yud K Vav K. And now if you can try to now just picture just Yud K Vav K as best you can, as shiny as you can, as bright as you can. Now picture the hay, final hay of Yud K Vav K is now going to extend a little bit, expand a little bit that hay. And you're going to see manifesting within that little hay a little olive, dalit, nun, and yud. Now try to just picture that olive, dalit, nun, and yud as best as you can, as bright as you can. Let the infinite light shine through every single one of those letters so bright that that's the only thing that exists is those letters and the brightness of those letters that shine. And now we're going to weave the two together in our mind's eye as best as we possibly can. 
You're going to breathe in good. Breathe out. You're going to breathe in Aleph. And try to picture it as you breathe it in and breathe out. Now you breathe in hay, and you breathe it out. Now you breathe in Dalit, and you breathe out. Now you breathe in Vav, and you breathe out. And now you breathe in Nun and breathe out. And now you breathe in Hey and now you breathe out. And now you breathe in Yud. Try to picture it, even if you could just mention the letters in a row, if you can't picture all eight letters simultaneously, at least go through your mind's eye as best you can, that each one will shine in the order that you notice them, going in the order of yud, and then aleph, hey, and then dalit, then vav, Take three deaths, three breaths, and you can open your eyes. And now we're going to do this last exercise. Something that you can take with you. Need another water? the exercise that we do okay because you have to remember this okay and this is what I do a lot of times during the week when I remember this is how we do it as we drink and if we drink with thirst shortly if it's not too cold the water with every sip as we feel the water coming down through us you meditate on these name on this name specifically okay in other words, when I take a sip of Yud, no, I have to say a bracha, you're right. I'm going to say a bracha, and those who didn't say a bracha should say a bracha. We could say a bracha together. You should say your own bracha, though. Baruch Atoa Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shehakol Nyeh Bidvaru So after you take your one sip, each time you take a sip, you meditate on that letter as you drink, okay? So in other words, you go Yud, Aleph, Hey, and Dalit, Vav, right? Like that. So you're drinking basically eight gulps, water by measure, okay? Every time you're doing that, okay? So 
now you can take this meditation every time you drink water, okay? Throughout the week, okay? And those who are watching there can use this as a meditative device to always connect, okay? Because even in water, as we know, right? is the life-giving force, and of course, this is the yud ke vav ke adenut, where you're bringing it down into us, okay? And as you feel it go down, so each one of these things, you know, now you're ingesting each one of the energy of these letters within us, okay? Any questions? Okay, we're gonna stop now, okay? Something to practice. <laughs>